All right, folks, let's talk about the issue of strength in sword fighting. I touched on this in the video about historical martial arts in general, linked down below if you haven't seen it, but I figured it would be good to treat this separately as well. So in fantasy, you, of course, have the stereotype of the steroid-infused, muscle-bound giant. And, of course, there's also this idea of brutish medieval sword fighting where they just swing at each other as hard as they can without technique or finesse. But I think at this point, not too many people buy into that anymore. But when correcting these myths, sometimes people overstate the point. And then you, you come across statements like, oh, you don't need strength at all in sword fighting, or you shouldn't hit hard. Hitting too hard is a valid safety concern in sparring, especially when it comes to hits to the head that can get pretty dangerous. So you should use moderation out of respect for your training partner's well-being, essentially. But there's also this idea, apparently, that power can interfere with proper technique or that good technique replaces power altogether. And I've seen some comments in that direction on YouTube where people essentially encourage light, uncommitted attacks, implying that with a sharp blade you don't need much force at all. So the polar opposite to the myth of brute force clashing. But here's the thing. Every competent martial artist will tell you that strength does matter in a fight. Less so in armed martial arts simply because you have this force multiplier in the form of a sword or a knife or a machete, anything like that. And it's true that you don't need anywhere near as much force to do sufficient damage with something like that as opposed to your bare fist. And in a sword fight, you can do well against a stronger opponent, and skill does overall matter more than strength. However, Having sparred people who are significantly stronger, I can say this comes with three main challenges. One, strength is speed. You know, people often separate the two, and they are somewhat separate, but strength, especially in armed fighting, very much translates to additional speed. If you have two people with identical swords, the stronger one will be able to move the sword faster, just because they don't feel the weight as much, and they are able to accelerate and stop it more effectively than the other person. Now, second, hard blocks are a lot more difficult against somebody who is strong. Now, deflectional parries, not so much of an issue. You can, with a deflectional parry, if you do it well, you can actually use the opponent's strength against them. But that's not always an option. Sometimes you end up in a, a situation where you just have to do a static block because you don't have the time for anything else or you're not in the right position, etc., etc. If you try to block a strike from a substantially stronger opponent, you can't half-ass it at all. Otherwise, they'll blow right through your guard and hit you anyway. And third, if a physically stronger opponent charges into grapple, you're doomed, unless you're significantly more skilled at grappling. Fiore specifically mentions strength as one of the eight attributes you need to be a good grappler. There are overall plenty of references to powerful attacks in the historical manuals. And it's important here to distinguish skilled power from force without skill. That's what the manual calls the buffalo. That's somebody who just uses brute force without proper technique. Now, skilled power here means more power as well, because it's more efficient. So the manuals talk about generating force with the entire body, you know, like a boxer's punch, which has the kinetic chain starting at the feet and then traveling through the entire body, through the legs, through the hips, 
you know, twisting the core into it uh, through the shoulders and arms. So this way you put as much of your body weight as possible into the strike. That's what's meant by strike with the entire strength of the body, as opposed to with just the arms. If somebody really throws a cut at you with their entire body, you need to put your entire body behind your defense or alternatively, as I said, use a deflectional parry with proper footwork and all that to guide that force away from you. Now, as usual, there are caveats and exceptions. You know, light cuts can be viable as a setup, for example, for a, a follow-up attack that's more of a fight ender. And in general, if you're in a situation where you can land a fairly light cut without exposing yourself, meaning without exposing yourself while you throw the cut, and without leaving yourself vulnerable to a counter. If you can get away with that, then there's really no good reason not to do it. Also, Thibaut talks about moderating one's strength according to the situation, which makes perfect sense. You don't always want to throw the most powerful cut possible. So it's definitely not always necessary or even advisable to strike as hard as you possibly can. But even if you don't, strength is helpful. I mean, if, if you don't strike as hard as you possibly can, if you strike at 50%, a stronger person's 50% may be another person's 100%. So even if you don't use quite as much, it's going to be easier, it's going to be faster, and all of that. So, of course, you know, saying strength is irrelevant or underplaying the importance of strength in any martial art is misguided. But it's just as misguided to think that a physically weaker fighter has no chance whatsoever. So, I hope that clarifies things and uh, hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. <laughs>